Here's a possible issue with having a trigger circuit attached to this flyback loop circuit. <clears throat> the possible issue is when this side flies back, you're going to have a positive right here coming off this through this high voltage diode positive hitting the battery and your negative flyback will hit here, right? Assuming the battery does not absorb all the flyback, the positive signal will go up here through the diode through the trigger winding through the resistor and it will hit the base here the positive and it will hit the base here but the negative flyback will go this way and it will only hit here this emitter thereby triggering only this transistor causing only this transistor to close which will then close the gate right here on this battery allowing the negative channel to connect but since the other transistor has not been triggered by the flyback now mind you this is not intentional I don't want the flyback triggering any of these transistors but fortunately the flyback's only triggering this transistor right now and since the positive channel here is not being triggered and it stays open then essentially the flyback triggering the bottom transistor on this battery here closing this channel is not causing this battery to charge this inductor because the other channel here the positive has not been closed it's still open so I encourage you guys regardless of this issue to go ahead and build it anyway with your trigger circuit if that's what you want to use originally I intended to trigger this with uh, not with a trigger winding does it you know but you can do it with a trigger winding and with a trigger winding you will have that issue possibly the flyback will cause one one of the the flyback of the opposite side will trigger the bottom transistor like so will cause the negative channel to close again because the positive flyback goes here you know through here through here through here through the diode hits the base and the negative flyback goes through here and hits the emitter causing this to close I don't see that as a problem because to get this side of the battery, this side, to charge this inductor, you need both channels to close, not one. Okay? So having a trigger winding will possibly cause one leg, the negative leg, of the opposite, uh, of, of, the, of one battery to close at a time when. it's supposed to be open but right after the flyback is done it's going to close anyway alongside with the other channel okay they're going to close together and so what i'm saying is having uh, the flyback trigger one leg is not going to cause an issue because you need both legs to close in order to charge this coil so that may be a glitch with having a trigger winding on this circuit it may cause the bottom transistor to close may may I say M-A-Y only if this battery does not absorb all the flyback coming in now from flyback from this core if this battery is full and it can't absorb any more flyback then obviously the flyback's going to go the route I said it before, you know only when the battery is full the flyback will go through and even if it does and it triggers one transistor it's still not enough to get the 
you know, to get this battery to, to charge this coil up here, is you need both transistors to close. And this negative of the flyback does not reach the emitter up here. Okay? So this negative of the flyback right here. Remember that becomes a negative. It doesn't reach up to the emitter up here. It only reaches the emitter here. Okay? And this negative becomes a positive flyback. Sound like you here. And it does reach there, and it does reach here. But like I said, the negative of the flyback only hits this emitter, not this one. Thereby only triggering this transistor to close. And, uh, you know, that's not a problem when you are triggering only one leg. What the hell, man? Sorry, excuse my hellish language. It's, you know, accidentally triggering one channel with the flyback from this side it's not an issue. You need both of these to close to get this to charge. I don't see it as an issue. And again, it's only if this battery is fully charged and the flyback cannot go here anymore. And if it, it is fully charged, the flyback will um, probably get absorbed into this coil. Which will then send voltage across here and trigger this but not a problem because you need both of these to close to get this coil to charge once again not really a problem maybe a problem for the transistor being switched for no reason and uh, you know might be a problem but I don't see it as a huge issue uh, switching a transistor for no purpose whatsoever Maybe this transistor will go bad because it's switching more than the other transistor. Maybe this transistor will go bad first, you know. But it's not going to cause the circuit not to operate. So I still think it's worth prototyping or building this. <clears throat> And if it becomes a problem, you can always trigger this circuit without a trigger point. In the meantime, I'm going to ignore that issue, while at the same time I'll try to find a workaround. I honestly don't see one though, because I thought about putting a diode here to stop this positive flyback signal from reaching the negative side but the problem with that is it's like putting a diode here when you do that and when you put a diode there and this gate closes I don't know how the positive is supposed to flow it won't and this will not charge having a diode here so I didn't do that I did do that at first and I took it out. I'm going without it now because I have that reason there. I won't be able to charge this coil when I have a diode there. But having the diode there will stop this from triggering. But at the same time it will stop this coil from charging. So I'm not going to use a diode there. I'm trying to find another way to do this. But again, it's not that important because Triggering only one transistor is not going to activate this coil and charge it. It's only, you know, it's only going to do this. 
We need both these channels to close for this coil to charge. So it's up to you guys if you want to build this anyway. Um, if you find that one of the, you know, that's triggering from the fiber, just know it's only going to close one channel and it won't cause this to charge when it's not supposed to charge. But this this cycle right here, we're looking at the flyback of this battery going into this battery. And this is the cycle we're looking at. And when it does that, the flyback will trigger this channel to close only. Only this channel. This channel remains untouched because the negative is here from the flyback, hitting this emitter only. The negative from the flyback does not reach here. Okay. This channel here is a positive flyback channel. Which that positive goes to here. It's that base. And you know already the negative hits the emitter here does not hit here. The negative is here. So that's that. <clears throat> that's that. That's the possible issue here. An issue that will not cause the circuit to, to operate incorrectly. It will only cause one channel to close which will not be a problem in my view. Because one channel closing here is not going to charge this. Both close. In this cycle we're looking at here, this is not supposed to be getting charged. The only thing that's happening in this event is this battery is receiving flyback from this coil. This is a negative a positive here. And this becomes a negative. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Um, so I'm going to leave the circuit as is. Anticipate the flyback triggering this gate to close. Right there. Don't anticipate that being a problem because it won't cause this to charge when it's not supposed to charge. On the next cycle, on the other side of the triggers, uh, on this trigger circuit, which will be a duplicate circuit of this on that trigger circuit the same thing will happen only this negative will close causing this not to charge because this will be open I still think it's okay to do this like this and have one channel close unintentionally that's not going to be an issue so when this uh, uh, trigger circuit is activated, it will close these two channels here and charge this coil up, like you see it doing now. Let's be this trigger circuit. Right now we're looking at um, this trigger circuit. So, just want to then close that one. Alright, I just thought I'd mention that so you guys can be aware of possible event, a non conflicting event to the circuit operation. If it becomes a problem, I only see it being a problem for this transistor running more switching more often than this transistor is and when it switches during that event it's switching for no reason at all it's not doing anything by switching there it's just an unintended consequence of the flyback and having a trigger winding circuit attached to the flyback loop circuit you can avoid this issue by triggering it with an Arduino or 
You can also trigger it with a uh, double pull, double throw relay on each plus and minus of each battery. And uh, that helps to isolate any issues like that. You know, keep in mind the trigger winding was designed for the single by filer system. Uh, a single inductor system. It wasn't designed to have on two inductors. But con consequently, having a trigger winding on two inductors with two transistors, you will have a possible issue like that of closing one gate on one side of the circuit and it will do that on the side of the circuit that's currently inactive so it's not really an issue in my opinion and, and in, in, in essence the uh, trigger winding will act like a like a neon bulb for your uh, for the one of the transistors it'll act like a protecting circuit uh, or when the battery's fully charged and it can't take any more flyback it'll head out through this channel here to the, the trigger winding and the trigger winding will absorb that flyback through the switching of the diode So the trigger winding, when this battery is full, can't take any more flyback, it will go through the trigger winding here and get absorbed. And, you know, whatever, it'll just get absorbed there. But, you know, like I said, I don't see that as a problem. I still think that, uh, you know, to build this thing, and it will still operate and then once you get it built and it's operating then you could take some volt measurements and see what's going on better and uh, yeah I just don't see it as a problem it, you know I prefer to trigger this with an Adreno for a few reasons because one you can control your frequency and keep it steady um, it is good to have a trigger winding as you can also tune it to the sweet spot with your 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 potentiometer or your resistor to the base <clears throat> but you could do the same thing with a with a, uh, with, a with an Adreno Arduino you could just tune the frequency to where it gets the uh, the tallest spike signal and then you know you have your resonance okay over now guys I'm gonna go without fixing this issue I'm gonna say let it let the flyback trigger one leg of the, in, of the inactive side of the circuit triggering one leg it's not gonna cause that side of the circuit to go active once again you need to trigger both legs to have that happen triggering one leg looking at it I don't see it causing any sorts of any kind or anything like that and I'm gonna go ahead with the trigger winding build as well as the Arduino build I like being able to do both it's good to be able to do what you want to do and fortunately for us this negative flyback signal is only reaching one emitter yeah the positive is it's reaching the base of one transistor not an issue
you know, again, you need both to close to, to create an issue here. You don't want this oil charging when this side is flying back. Okay, guys. This circuit looks good to me. Except for that one nuance. So I do not consider it to be an issue. I only consider it to be wearing down this transistor a little more than wearing down this one. But when this transistor closes for no reason, there's no voltage passing through it. So you may not wear it down at all. There's no current passing through it. It's just being triggered. So don't worry about it. Go ahead with your build and then worry about it. As Bedini would say, build it. Don't try to understand it. Don't try to figure things out. Build it, get it running then try to understand it and then you know evolve the circuit from there improve it from there and that's what he said and that's what i think is good advice i've been building circuits you know not constantly but on and off for decades <clears throat> and every time i go to a new project or a new circuit that i don't fully understand. I don't even try to understand it. I just build it as it's drawn out. Of course, I try to understand it a little bit, but I don't waste my time trying to fully understand it if I cannot. I just go ahead and build it. Once it's running, then I start to uh, investigate and, and, and understand, understand it because it's easier to understand the circuit once you get it running. Best of luck, guys. Reach out to me if you have any questions on this. Over now.